This part work has been supplied to me free of charge from fanhome.com. Please pop along to their website and see all of the other build-up part works that they have to offer, as well as other collections of collectible things. I would like to thank Fan Home for providing me with the part work so I can produce these videos for your enjoyment and educational needs. If you'd like to build one of your own, pop along to fanhome.com. They're available in many countries worldwide. If you do want to build one, leave a note in the comments to let me know how you're getting on. And let me know how I'm getting on as well. I'd like feedback of all types. So thank you once more to Fan Home for providing me with this kit. I hope you enjoy the build. Let's get on with it. Hello, I'm Chris, this is Gross Models, and welcome to issue 9 of Fast and Furious Build the Legendary Dodge Charger RT from Fan Home. Uh, yes, it's all coming together. Now, previously, you've seen me build this bit and this bit, and obviously lots of other bits before, but they were all separate the last couple of weeks. Now, this time, we're putting them together, as you can see. We've got other parts and bits that we've done before, and other bits that we haven't done before, but before we get to the building, as ever, we'll have a quick look at the magazine itself and see what we're talking about. Stunt performers, I do like stunts. They, they, you know, doing it for real rather than all CG and things makes a film look much more, I won't say realistic, because the Fast and Furious films aren't realistic. But yeah, a little bit more believable. Uh, practical effects and things, yeah, all very good. Uh, Debbie Evans, apparently. Virtually a permanent present in Fast and Furious. Um, Stunt performer. Cool. Very good. Uh, I don't know what that oh, the evolution of the logo. The Dodge logo. I I recognise that one. I, I vaguely remember that one. But I don't remember that. And this is obviously the new, well, I'd say new, 10 year ago one. But I, I've got no memory of any of those. But they're all before I was born anyway. So. And it's an American car company. So why would I? Uh, right, we have a whole mess load of screws, as you can see, lined up in alphabetical order across the top there. Uh, obviously, lots of other pieces. Uh, torsion bar bushing. I don't know what these... I should learn them, but cover plates for chassis struts and the big long thing again. What's that? That's the front suspension torsion bar. Some of the parts are spares. There's the screws, obviously. They're going to give us a few extra screws, as they always do. Uh, right, so the right uh, front right suspension and the chassis. So we need to bring back, from previous times, the entirety of the chassis. Now, I've got this back out of the box, and I've, I've forgotten how big it was. After having dealing with little bits from, you know, the last couple of weeks, I've forgotten about this is just the front bit of the car. And, yeah, it's huge. Now, you'll recognise in here... That bit basically uh, with the suspension working the suspension that's again very very stiff but there's not the huge massive carb weight sitting on top of it this time so hopefully this is going to be exactly the same on the other side and we'll feel just as stiff but we'll figure that out as we go we're taking the front section of the chassis and positioning uh the cover plate on the front right strut Right, now this is where it gets confusing, because this is the part that they're referring to there. And I can make out in the picture there that it is a particular way round, because there's a little um, lumpy bit on one side, but not on the other. So it looks like it's being held in place with that coming out that way. Did we do the same on this the other side? I don't remember. I know there was a bit like that, but I don't know. Uh, where is it going? This is... In the middle, that it's going on that bit there by the looks of it. Yeah, so there it is, it's exactly the same coming out the other side. So that makes perfect sense to me there. Uh, we are using a AM screw. I'm looking at the the picture rather than the words for a lot of this build. I find that the pictures that they've done of the exploded diagram pictures are very, very useful. They seem to be more useful than they are in many part works. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the words and then not understanding when they refer to a particular part because they use the real world name of the part, which I don't know. Uh, so that's that. Um, done that. Yeah, with the smooth side of the cover plate facing upwards. It's not. Oh, there's a different bit. Right. Hang about. Let, let me just use the pictures. We've got that bit. It looks like there's that, there's that bit as well. That bit is going down here. Uh, what have we got? A little plug, one screw. 
We haven't got done this bit over the other side yet. That's fitting in there. Got to fit in there because that's where the shaping is. So that's got to go in there uh, with a CM screw. Uh, two more CM screws for the other bit. So let's get three of those out. Let's put one on there. This side is a bit different, so I'm not sure exactly why or what, but that seems to work in there. There we go. Uh, this one, again, this is the one that has a difference to it. It's got an R on it, but it's also got the holes are in slightly different positions, which I didn't notice until after I tried to put it on and managed to get it the right way round. But um, so this is going up here, but you've got to get it the right way round. One way it will fit, and one way it won't. So let's try it that way. Right, that or that way definitely doesn't fit, as you can see. That's not not at all right on there. So I had it right the first time round, like that, and we're putting that in place with two of the CM screws because they're going into metal. It's a plastic part, this one, but it's going into metal. So that's what the screws are doing. Why well, they're the M variant. That's going in there, one in loose, and then another one in properly, and then tighten them both up. Yep. And, yep. There we go. So that seems to be... Everything on there, let's just have a quick read up. The hole with the flange must be facing upwards. I don't, yeah, that was a bit there, but that was the thing with the other thing. Okay, that looks like that's okay. Carefully insert the wide end of torsion bar, this this big. Uh, it's the same way around as the picture. That wide end is coming out of here just like that did. I can't, can't see it from the other side. There, about there. It's got to be about there. There it is, right. So that's going through there. Uh, attach the tilting bolt with a DM screw through the cross frame into the end of that. So we've got to put a DM screw, of which there are only two, so I'm pretty sure that this is a spare one. Put that over there. And this is going into the end, just like we did over this side. So that goes into there. We can tighten that down. Even with it tightened down, this will still rotate to get it in the right angle for wherever it needs to attach into, which I'm sure we're going to be doing just about now, actually. Uh, that's that. Turn that over. And then we are using... Uh, 5A is the whole thing. We need 9A, which is the bit that looks a bit like that. An IM screw, of which there are two, so one of those is spare. Drop that down there, put that out the way, put that on the screwdriver, primed and ready to go. Uh, so this is going uh, that way round onto that bracket there with that locating into the end of it. That makes sense to me. It goes on there like that, that goes in there and we're away. Screw in there, holding it all. Just the right way. So before I tighten that down, make sure that is seated properly. And tighten that down. Just like that. No wibble there. That's all good. Fine. Looks pretty symmetrical to the other side as well. That's always nice. Uh, that was that. Fixed in place. Right. Position kingpin 9E mountain ring. Mountain ring. Uh, that's this bit. Between the jaws of the front right suspension brick. That's there here. Right. So this goes... Again, this was the slightly tricky bit. So between the jaws there. So that just goes through there like that. Okay. That's easy enough. Uh, fixed in place with an FM screw. Um... Then another FM screw. So let's get two FM screws out. Two of those. Okay, so one is going to... Move that out of the way first so I can see what I'm doing. This is this way round. 
screw just going through there. Once again, making sure it all lines up as it should. Doesn't feel like it is. Slack it off again and try one more time. That's again, doesn't feel right. Could be further out than I thought. Does that feel right? better but now it's rotating around it so I'm pretty sure that is okay just tight because of all the painted pieces yeah that's that's definitely wobbling around as it should I think I'm just fighting against the paint of the piece because if I loosen back off then it's very easy which is a perfectly valid way of getting these screws in. If you tighten it down a turn and then come back half a turn, it makes it easier. It breaks up the, the paint that's on the thread and just makes everything work better. Instead of all building up, you can sort of bend it and break it a little bit. Not break it, but break the paint out so it works better. There we go. That's got some movement to that. Good, I like that. That's that. Now we need 9D, which is the big piston, which is going in the other side, and that's where the other FM screw is inserted. Put that in there again. A little bit of wibble and wobble, just to make sure it lines up in the right place. You can sort of see through to make sure it does, but it, it will it'll move a bit by by the time you put the screw in so going by feel is the best way if it feels like it's not lining up it's probably not lining up so take a bit of time a little bit of adjustment come back and try again it's actually tight going through even that first bit So that's going to be very tight going through the second bit. So I will come back out again, make sure it's not cross threaded. Looks good from angles, so it should be okay. I think it's just a case of paint in the hole again. Uh, so I'm going to break out a slightly heavier duty screwdriver and try it again with a little bit more tension available to me goes in there a little bit easier and once you've broken through the paint problem that's gone all the way through through the other side so that's good let's just take, take it all the way in and then I can easily come out with very little problem. Then get that lined up in there. And then know that when I'm doing it up, I'm only... Any problems that I encounter is going to be because of that not lining up properly. But that's going in with almost no pressure at all now, which is exactly what you need. Until we get to the end. Well, we can do it up nice and tight. Still got movement there, still got movement there. So far, so good. That was that. Uh, now we need to do the other little bits. Uh, this just pushes into there, doesn't it? It's the limitary type thing. Just stops it from overextending too much one way or the other. Like that. Stops that from bending down too far. Then we've got this, which goes in over that peg, uh, that way around, like that, and that's held in place with an EM screw. And there's an EM screw. And there's that, and that's going into the end there. Just like that. Tighten it down. 
until it comes to a stop just like that uh, so that's still got movement in that way the whole thing does still move up and down and the piston is loose there as well right then we've got the spring this was the bit that was fun last time but it should be less fun this time i think no it's going to be more fun this time it's going to be easier because uh we're using this from last time basically that's going to go in there but the springs will go in there first so we've got the spring in then that goes on uh which way around and how and what's attaching to where uh I can't recall, and I can't quite tell. Let's read the words. The pieces that you assembled in stage eight. Uh, insert the spring into the shock absorber, followed by the shock absorber piston. Then align the two small holes on the knuckle arm, 9F. Right, that's the bit that I just put on. Two sm oh, the two small holes on there, I wasn't even paying attention to those. Those two holes there are going to go on to in there. So let's bend that open. That doesn't help because that's not where that needs to be. Right, let's have a look and see. Uh, join them with two CM screws. That's got to go onto there. So oh yeah, I can open that that way, and they're going on there. Okay, that that works quite well because of the. This is the bit where the spring's going to fall out. Right, let's take the spring out. Let's get some CM screws. And let's do it the same way that I did the other one, which worked for me last time. Whether it works for everyone or works this time, we'll find out. So that's going on there like that. So that screw's going through that hole. I do like that this is a, a very intensive build heavy week. Um, I, I do... I mean, I like I like all of the building, but I especially like it when when parts come together. So, uh, you know, building the separate piece was all right. It's fine. It, it's quite nice to be able to build it, you know, on its own without having to worry about the massiveness of the model. But when you then get to fit that to the other piece and then put this together with that and then this and that to go to with the other piece that does it for me that that i really enjoy so that's now attached to there so we've got movement in all directions from that so now we've got to get the piston lined up which is easy why, why are they telling us to put the screw in and put the piston in when you can do it right at the end just like that and then that should work perfectly sure I've done something wrong because it doesn't feel like it was hard to do I, I might be backwards or inside out or something I don't know uh, let's try and find out if we can mount that to that so let's put that to one side for a moment while I get the correct screws we need uh, FM and EM screws by the looks of it so there's an EM I'll put the bag next to it so I don't get confused and two FM Okay, so what's happening there? Uh, it says, insert the locating spring pins on the spring mount into the holes in the middle of the strut. Attach the assembly with two FM screws, assigning, uh, attaching them from underneath. So yeah, I've got this the right way up. So this is going uh, from that side, because it goes on, wheels go on the outside of the car, not the inside. They're going into there like that because there's two holes in there that this is going to line up to like that and this is where the FM screws come into play it does doesn't it? yes I'm, I'm trying to think ahead and see where the other bit's going to go to make sure I'm getting it in the right sort of place and it feels like I am so that's in there so it's not tight but it's in there do the same with the bottom one here okay so that's in there i need to tighten those up but that's okay that's looking pretty symmetrical to the other side which is always what i'm going for i'm going to use my more meaty screwdriver for this 
because I do need to make sure they are nicely secure. That's that. And that is that. Okay, so then this is going on to there, just like it did on the other side, and we're using an EM screw on the end of that. Can we get to that from under here? I think we probably can. Yep. Sort of. Sort of mostly. So. There we have. That is working like that. That is... Uh, let's see. That turns quite freely on there. This is not so free, but is that just because it hasn't got a huge wheel attached to it? Because this is actually loose, because that is loose, because that's not where it all attaches. The wheel attaches to the centre piece, not that spinning piece. And it does attach to that. I don't understand it. I've done what it tells me to do. So, so far so good. Let's just check the suspension arm has slipped out. Yep, I thought it might have. Uh, is the spring still in there though? Can't feel it. It's not anywhere else. Yes, there it is. Right, so if that slipped out, is that going to go back in without attention? No. So I need to undo that screw again. Take that off, put that back together. I'll do that off camera. It's already a very long video and there is still more to do. So let me do that first and prepare for the next bit and I shall see you in a moment. Okay, that was actually a lot easier than I thought. And it's also, as a side note, much easier to get to that from above rather than from below. It lines up almost perfectly from above. So that, that's a better way of accessing that. Uh, the steering is still a little stiff, but it's working. It, it moves. Just uh, probably not quite as much as you would think it would, but enough. So that's that. Uh, next up, we are bringing back in the other part from earlier, uh, which is going... Uh, let's get this the same way round again as the picture. That's that way round. That's that. That's going on the front here somewhere. I can't see. Uh, right, turn it upside down. That, this is upside down. Okay, this is the under, underneath. Um, I can't make out exactly what... Oh, these are going on to there. Right, I've got you. They're going on to there. So this is that screw there. And these are going on to there like that. It does just sort of line up just about right. Like that. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. That's so far so good. Uh, I did notice that on one of the pictures, these bits were silver but they're obviously black in the kit and on the pictures here they're black as well so I'm not worrying about repainting those or anything like that so that's going on there uh, these is uh, key KM and CM screws being used in this so let's have a look uh, 3CM and 2KM uh, the KM ones are the ones right at the very front so let's get them done first as ever, I'm not going to be tightening them all down until they're all in place anyway. So we've got two KM screws and we need three CM screws. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of spares from that as well. Uh, so uh, let's have a look. One CM is going to be that one in the middle. Just in there and going into that short little bracket that didn't quite connect to anything. So that's in there in place, but not tightened down fully. Uh, then we've got these two here, either side. That one. And that one. Okay, and then the other two CM screws. going in on the underside down there uh, now again I've for the sake of not making this an hour long video I shall go back and tighten those up off camera uh, but the other little thing to do on here is the other screw packet that we haven't used yet the DP because they're going into plastic 
Uh, we need two of those. And they are attaching this, basically, but from the other side, obviously. So if we turn that over there, get that uh, through that hole there, and into that post. So the trick is going to be holding it in the right place to get that in there. Actually, the screwdriver is a little bit thick in the body this is going to let me get in and around much neater closer to the frame so get that in there present up that on the other side and then that tightens in there uh being that it's going into plastic don't over tighten don't be a, don't be too extreme with it this is cosmetic suspension part it's not actually connecting anything heavy to it so it doesn't have to put up with lots of weight and things. Uh, that side, same. So again, I'll, I'll go back and tighten all those up momentarily. But first of all, I'm going to finish the video after having a look through the back end of the video, the, uh, the tuning mania, uh, wheel mania, all the secrets of alloy wheel rims. I think they just look nice. They're probably lighter easier to clean i don't know i don't know the secrets but if you read the if you pause it you can probably read it and find out for yourself but yeah they do look quite nice although i'm not sure i don't like being able to see the brake stuff through it I, I, that's just me uh that is that and the last page is just telling you the wheel spokes and the hubcap there we go uh how an alloy wheel is forged that's quite interesting painted and cut and yeah uh, so that's that. That was issue nine. Uh, there is one more issue in this month's batch, which is issue 10, as you may have gathered, which will be forthcoming in a few days. So thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying the build as much as I'm enjoying building it. And uh, I'll see you soon for the end of this month. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.